Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing um, utility maximization with multiple constraints. And in this video, we're going to be discussing uh, maximizing Stone Gary preferences, right, where we have actual numbers uh, subject to two constraints. And we're just going to give them names. We're going to call it a budget constraint and a capacity constraint being uh, the second one. The actual story uh, doesn't really matter here. We're just going to go and you know, work with the computation. And just before we work through this whole thing extensively, um, I just want to go and give a warning that not everything is so easy, uh, like these steps here. And we're going to go and run into issues. So this is going to be our first uh, time where we're going and we're encountering uh, these types of issues. So in order to solve this, we have to rewrite our consumer's problem to be as generic as possible while noting our coefficient values like last time. Next is that we're going to write down a generic Lagrangian with respect to a single constraint. Next is that we're going to go and solve for our perspective demand equations with cost coefficients from constraint J and objective capital R J. And then we're going to go and plug our coefficients into the generic demand equations and check the optimums at each constraint. So step number one is that we're going to go and first really anonymize our information here, right? We're going to first write out our problem, right? Putting letters where numbers should be and then naming those numbers. Step number two is that we're going to go and write our constraint specific Lagrangian, meaning that we're going to be considering one constraint at a time. And step number three is that we're going to go then and solve for our input demands. Now, the calculus and algebra is skipped here because this is exactly the same as solving for the demand with respect to a single constraint. Now, I just wrote down uh, one uh, demand equation down here, but we can easily change this to be for our second uh, demand equation, right? By just going and changing a few numbers. And there we go. That is for our second equation that we go and we have here. Step number four is that we're going to plug in our coefficient values. Now, this is just, you know, computing these results. Um, and we go and we get the following numbers. Um, for their own individual constraints, these values go and work. However, for our regular for each other's constraints we're going to go and see that we run into big issues here right so down here you know i can tell you right away that these are just not going to go and work you can plug in the numbers yourself and it just doesn't work so the reason why this doesn't work um, requires a little bit of thinking about our problem and we need to kind of go and visualize what's going on so let's first go and look at uh, what the visual of these constraints are on each other, right? What we end up with here is that we have these constraints going and binding each other simultaneously with an optimum being a single point. Now, with calculus, right, we probably solve for situations where we have a optimum, optimum like this, or say under a different case, we have a optimum right here, right, where we're gonna be in violation of uh, one of those constraints or another. Um, but the problem really is, is that we can't go and use calculus because our optimum is a single point. But note that we can still use the Lagrangian here, but just not the first order conditions that you would go and expect. So looking at step number five is that we're going to use our constraints. Now, remember our constraints are just our Lagrangian, right? with the first order condition being with respect to the multipliers themselves, right? So this is just really our first order conditions with respect to our multipliers. And then we go and we solve it as a system, right? This isn't anything foreign here, right? So what we do is that we take our second equation, right? The second one down, let me just go and name it here. And this is our first one. And we go and we solve for a intermediate result. Afterwards, we then go and sub that intermediate result into one, and we get a concrete answer, right? With x2 star being equal to 32.1428, right? There's more decimal points. And x1 being equal to 30.7142. So this is still handleable from the perspective of our Lagrangian, just that we're not using the first order condition that you would go and suspect. We don't have to necessarily solve for a direct demand equation to go and compare things, 
right? We first want to go and see what our solution would be with respect to our first order conditions with respect to our multipliers. So this is how we would go and solve a little bit more of a complicated problem uh, when we have two constraints. And we just have to keep be cognizant of the fact that there are two things going on. So I hope this video helps. Take care.